Hey y'all, it's Grant. Um, so I'm about to give you a video about uh, how to replace the cords or strings on, on your soft top for a Mercedes E400. Uh, that's an A238 convertible, uh, the year's 2018. Uh, in the initial uh, build, they had some issues with their design, so uh, we had to do some fixes. Uh, so a couple things before you jump into this video. Uh, first off, recorded it late at night. It's, uh, it is what it is, you know, best effort kind of thing. Uh, I hope it helps you. I uh, really want to kind of contribute something here. Uh, second thing, be safe, be careful. That convertible top will go up and down if you're not careful, if it's not balanced. Uh, first thing I'll tell you is when you go to uh, put the soft top halfway up or halfway down, where depending on where you're starting, uh, just don't hit the brake pedal, hit the start button two times so you get the ignition to the on position, then hit your brake pedal, move the, the uh, soft top up or down uh, with the little lever halfway, and then and then let off the brake and press the start button again so it turns everything off and then get the key at least 10 feet away from the car. So if you do that, what happens is the car kind of shuts down and it, and it doesn't stay in an active mode because the key is really close. Uh, if you keep the key in the car, the car will eventually shut the, the top or, or uh, either open it or close it, depending on which way is closer. Um, and which is really dangerous. So be really careful whenever you're working around all these mechanics, these moving parts of the soft top, get your hand pinched in there or your wrist or your elbow, you're done. So do not reach in, you know, more than your wrist length for sure. Uh, and when it starts moving, make sure you can get your hand out in an instant. Uh, just be really careful, please. Uh, second thing, I'm not a mechanic, I'm not trained, I'm not certified, and I'm way, way not insured to fix your problems. So if you're not comfortable doing this, don't do it. Uh, but definitely don't come to me saying, Grant, you know, Grant, you said you should do this and now I'm hurt. Uh, sorry, not my problem. You're doing this at your own risk. Just trying to help out some friends who might want to also do this uh, job on their own. So I hope you enjoy the videos. Please be safe. Be very, very careful. Uh, and uh, anyway, enjoy. Thanks. Hey, this is Grant. How you doing? I've got to my uh, 2018 uh, Mercedes E400 here. Uh, the convertible top has some issues with the uh, little strings or cables that, um, that help close the, uh, the top when it goes up and down. It keeps the interior liner uh, all connected to the frame. Uh, the problem is they've got a design flaw, really horrible design, and those, uh, those cords inside there tend to fray. I'm going to include a couple pictures in here so you can see the before and after. Um, but what this video is, is uh, I've done one side just to make sure I can figure out how to do it. Uh, of replacing those cords and, and I thought you know why not make a video and show everybody just what you need to do how you can do it I, I guess Mercedes is charging three to five thousand dollars a car to do this so uh, I've got laid out here all the stuff that I picked up to get this done also gonna put part numbers in the video uh, attach those uh, hopefully they should be below you know at the bottom of the screen right now if I can do it right uh, but here's what we got so I'm gonna flip this over here are the things you're gonna need if you're gonna replace these cords if you got these strings fraying. Uh, hang on a second, I'm just actually gonna put it in the video to show you what one side of my strings looks like. Okay, here on the uh, driver's side of the car that I have not done yet, you can see I've got the convertible top halfway opened. Um, and, and if you look here, a number of these, these uh, little cords are showing the white cord on the inside. That's the actual uh, part of the cord that has the strength in it. The, the cover has come off. And if you let those go enough, uh, long enough, they will break. So. Uh, you know, I, I just thought this is unacceptable. I, I'll just make it part of regular maintenance to get that fixed somehow. But uh, I haven't seen anybody that's figured out how to do it yet or been brave enough to, uh, to go at it on this car. Because beautiful vehicle, you hate to take uh, major tools to uh, something this nice when it's uh, still pretty young. So I'm going to go back over to my bench and show you the tools we're going to use to swap out the bad strings. Okay, we are back over here at the workbench, uh, and I apologize, it is very late at night, so if I ramble a little bit, you're going to have to let it go. Uh, I started on this in the late evening, and uh, still going. So again, part numbers are going to be at the bottom. So the first thing I did was uh, call Mercedes, and uh, thanks to Kay at the uh, MB World, uh, Koenigsteiger got, got me the part numbers, uh, so I was able to use that and get two things. One is this roll of cloth tape, uh, super expensive for a roll of cloth tape, but... You know what, for $100 instead of $3,000, I thought, why complain about the cost of the individual pieces? Uh, and also, the kit itself came with a bunch of the strings, like every, everything you would need to rebuild the top on this uh, car. 
you've got it here. So there's way more here than you're actually going to need. Uh, what we're going to really use is a number of the strings, and if you look at these things real close, closely, you can see each one is color coded. And the ones, the old ones on the car are also color coded. So what you're really going to be doing here is matching up, replacing a blue string with a blue string, and a, a green string with a green string, etc. You can just find the strings that you need uh, to replace and replace them. Uh, so we're going to need the strings, we're going to need uh, these little, uh, you see that there? I forget what it calls these things. These, these little rings just crimp around the uh, loose end of the string. You see the one end of each string has a, a hook already, it's attached to this little eye, eye hook. And then the other end is just open. So these um, clamp around, these rings clamp around the open end. Then you're also going to need these rivets. You're going to need the long rivets. It comes with a bunch of short ones and a bunch of long ones. You need the longer ones. And the way you tell the difference, they look like little swords, right? So the ones that have the bigger sword handle are the ones you're going to use. It's just two sizes there. So there's plenty of them there. You can practice with one. Uh, so that means to put it on, you're going to need a rivet gun or a rivet tool. And then you're going to need, and i got to look and see uh, exactly which size I ended up using. I think there's a size on this thing. It says... 4.0 on the tip. You have to cut that out. The camera can't focus it. It won't do you much good. Well, hopefully I can look later and uh, maybe add it to the video. So you need that. You definitely need some safety glasses. Um, I had to go to the store and buy fishing line. This is 30 pound fishing line and it still broke on me several times doing the one side. It will get the job done, but it's difficult. Get the strongest fishing line you can get your hands on. Uh, you are going to need uh, different size pliers. You're definitely going to need your vice grips. Preferably ones if you have them without grooved uh, tips. See, mine have a... It has grooves on the tips here. Um, if you can get one that's got flat tips, that's even better. Um, I've got a handy little... It's almost like a screwdriver, but it's really just a, a pointed tip. On this thing, this thing comes in handy more than I ever realized. Uh, you're gonna need a tiny screwdriver. Uh, this thing's uh, about, I don't know, less than a quarter inch. You know, that's pretty small. Uh, and then you're also gonna need, uh, I found it handy to have a few lights, lights useful, and a uh, drill. Uh, I used an angle grinder. And then the one drill bit I used here, uh, hang on a second. Okay, the, the one drill bit that I used here is the one eighth size. So you need your eighth size drill, drill bit. And uh, I've already gone through one. Hopefully the second one will last me the rest of the uh, night because I don't have any more here of that size. So if you got those, and then you're gonna want a towel or rubber mats or something to protect the side of the car. As I turn around here, show you the side that I was using, uh, that I've already done, the passenger side. I got a towel over here. And you can see where I've already been working. Um, there's little bits of, of metal shavings all over the place. So you're going to have some cleanup to do when you're done. The more you can protect it while you're working, the better. So uh, let's go over to the other side. Uh, I'm doing my own camera work. It's late at night. My son's uh, been in bed for a while. So I'm going to do my own camera work. Sorry for that. Um, but let's get started. Okay. I am back. All right. So we are over on the driver's side. And I've got four uh, of these cords to replace on each side of the car. So I've already done four on the other side. I'm not gonna walk you through each one, but I wanna share some things that I learned uh, as I did this. Uh, first off, each of these is color coded. If you look at the, at the very ends here of the ones that, that need done here, what I'm gonna do is show you. Well, if I can get the light right, I might show you something nice. We'll see, hang on a second. There we go, all right. So these down here are the ones that need replaced. And if you look real close, you'll see one of them's blue. You see how that one's got a blue tint on the side of it? The other one is actually silver. So I think what they really did there was scrape off all the, the paint. I don't think it's really silver paint. I think they just scraped off the paint that was on there. So anyway, that, that's how you get your right cables. Now, the really, really important thing is here to get the right color replaced with the right color. And the reason for that is each one is um, measured down to the millimeter on its length. So I, I definitely recommend you use the Zentry step-by-step uh, -step instruction guide for, for doing this thing. Uh, but the real most important thing here to remember is 
get the right right one replaced with the right one and make sure they're always routed through exactly the right cable spots now the, the most tricky part of this is you know what i thought it would be is getting these old rivets out and replacing them uh, that actually turned out to be the easy part so you can uh, what i did with with this lower one is just drill it out if you drill it out and you can push it out the other side um, to push it out, by the way, you will need to close the, the convertible top um, about three quarters of the way. Uh, I was able to do it with, with a little bit of effort um, by myself, but really what you want is a helper to move it. As it moves forward, what you'll see is on the back, on the back side, I don't know if I can get the angle on, on here or not. Let me see if I can show it. You see the back of that rivet right in between, there you go, right in the middle. Right in the center of the screen, you see that the, the little uh, silver dome looking metal piece of that rivet between the black metal pieces. Um, it, it can't go anywhere until you almost close the top and then that, that piece to the left gets out of the way. So this piece here gets out of the way and then in the middle, that, that I'm actually trying to point at it here if I can get my angle, this is horrible. There we go. So right beneath my finger, you can see the other part of that rivet. It won't come out. So if you drill out this side here, where's my finger? If you can drill out this side here, that's great, but you can't push it through and push the thing out until you get the, the top closed. So that's a tip for that side. Uh, another tip is um, up here on this top one, what I did was grind this side of the rivet off. So I just ground that thing away. Um, and, and what I did the first time that, that it was a little wrong is I ground it too much, tried to grind it away. What you really want to do is grind it flat enough that you can get your drill bit on it and then just drill it out. Um, I also was very careful to take pictures of the front and back of everything I was doing before I did it. I took pictures of before, uh, multiple angles, everything I could do to get color and points of view. So I knew as I put it back together, when I put the next rivet on, everything was in the exact same way it was before, just with the new cables. Um, the other thing that I learned here that you guys are going to want to do is uh, these where the where the cords come in and they attach to the to the top here They go through these these holes here, and that's where you're going to use your fishing line uh, you're Really pulling the new one through like the instructions say with the pull the old cable through and use a use a I think it says something like it says rig it basically is what it says and fish a line through don't worry about attaching it to this old one just uh, pull the old one out and, and the new, the fishing line can just go right through this little, it's a little tunnel underneath the metal here. The fishing line goes right through that. You can fish it through real easy on every single one of these things. Uh, the, the, the other thing is these uh, metal pieces at the top here, these end stops that have been crimped on, um, those just push out with a screwdriver. So hopefully I can show you one of those, but they come out really relatively easily. I mean, it's not a big deal. So I thought that was gonna be ugly. I was wondering what was going on there. Just push them out with that little tiny screwdriver. Uh, and when you go to crimp them, uh, the crimp those rings, when you put them back on, you gotta crimp with all your might. Uh, it took multiple times. And also I found crimping, crimp in the center down as much as you can, and then do the right side, then the left. You, you can't do it all at once barehanded. It's just, it's just tough. So let's see if I can give you a video of doing one of these, and then you can get the idea. Okay, now before I do this first one, I want to add a disclaimer. Um, I'm not a mechanic, right? I'm, I've just been working on cars since I was a kid. Just when I had a car and needed something, I was happy to work on it. Um, try to do things to the, to the specs of the dealer because uh, of the OEM because, you know, generally they're engineered pretty well, especially Mercedes. I do like their engineering. Uh, in most cases, not really proud of what they did with the top here, but um, try to follow that very much. But, you know, I'm not a mechanic. If, if you're not comfortable figuring some stuff out on your own and, uh, doing this kind of thing. Uh, don't just do it because uh, Grant said, hey, this is a great idea. Uh, at your own risk kind of thing. My car is out of warranty. I'm not voiding the warranty in any way. Uh, so, you know, I can do what I want with my car. So uh, anyway, do this at your own risk. Uh, so step one here, um, we've got a, I, I grabbed the blue one. And what I found is uh, it's very, just, it makes me feel better to trace down the, the, the uh, cable that you think is the right one. Like mine already broke, so I, I know how it's supposed to go here. I can see it, uh, see the path it took, but just follow the cable down the path, run it tip to tip and make sure you got the right length. Again, these are all sized down to the millimeter, exactly what length they need to be. When you crimp them in, the instruction sheet says, you know, leave three millimeters uh, poking out when you put the ring on it and crimp that on. Uh, it's got a lot of really good specifics. So 
Step one, trace the, the cable down and make sure you definitely have the right one, definitely have the right length, your colors aren't a little off. Uh, if you're a guy like me, uh, sometimes you get colors a little off, so it's good to double check. Uh, and also some of these have two colors on them. So there's two of them with blue on them. Uh, one of them is just blue and I think blue and yellow, and this one's just plain blue. So I'm going to run these cables, run each one, uh, and then I'm going to cut off the old one, and I'm going to yank it, you know, pull it out of the top, and um, drill out the rivet, and then attach the two ends. So uh, I, I, I do this end first. Uh, I found that kind of helps me keep them straight. I'll do the end that's not riveted in, uh, and then run it back, and then have the two dangling here when I drill out the old rivet and connect it. I just found doing one or two at a time at most, just the two that are in the same rivet. Uh, is safer rather than run them all and then try to remember exactly how they were positioned, take lots of pictures, uh, etc. So I'm going to get started. Okay, I just ran the blue cord around. I moved my light a little bit so it's in the way. I apologize. Okay, so it's running through. And I want to remind you, okay, so here it is dangling. You can see it here. I've got it dangling just out of the edge hook there. Give you a little perspective. That's where it's dangling. Um, you do need to run it so that this is this this eye hook here at the end the eye at the end is dangling and you run it through just with the raw end of the cable first because uh, it, that, that this this eye can't go through all the little loops so there are some uh, little eye hooks and things that that end can't go through you always feed it with the loose end first uh, and on this one uh, on the blue one uh, and as well as on the silver one for this lower uh, lower pair that I have to do uh, it's worth noting that back in that pillar right there where they see they go around the corner there and then they loop back and then they come right down there and boom that's where it attaches so right here is is the old blue one right it attaches there um it's worth noting that on that back pillar there right back here where my fingers are there are actually two hooks there's one you can see and one you can't uh, so that ring you see it go through, there's actually a, another one back behind there. You have to reach back with your hands and feel it and make sure that you poke the, uh, poke the cords through both of those hooks. So now what I'm going to do is grab my screwdriver and see if I can one-handed show you how this, uh, the other end comes out. Okay, let's see if I can do this one-handed on this one. Uh, I do not recommend trying this because it's a pain. But basically all I'm doing here is you see my screwdriver going in poke in the back of this that will oops sorry you just stick it back in there back behind it and poke it back and forth on the two sides it will come out uh, so it looks like I can't do it one-handed but that's all you're gonna do is poke that that thing from the back side with the screwdriver and it'll pop right out I'll show you what it looks like when I get it out this is a uh, well alright so what I found is this is a multi-step process the first step is get the the cord to where it's poking out the right amount out the edge of it and you give it the initial first squeeze real good and that gets it so that the the ring is on there and then it takes multiple other squeezes you get your uh, vice grips a little bit tighter each time and you do uh, you do a few more so it gets more and more set there and that ring just gets flatter and flatter and flatter now you look at this here. See how that ring is getting a little flatter? Now you're going to have to squeeze with your entire life force to get this down. They, they want it down to 3.75 millimeters, give or take a quarter. So in order to measure that, I've got a handy, handy little measuring guy here. I forget what this is called, but it does the job. And it says with the first two squeezes, I got it down to 6.34 millimeters. So again, I've got a lot of work left to do. Um, you're gonna find getting it down to 3.75 requires a lot of work and multiple iterations and doing right then left at the very end to get uh, enough strength on it. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's that. Hang on while I get there and then I'll come back to you. All right, everybody, we have success. We have it down to 3.81 millimeters thick. Uh, so if you can get that you are in really good shape and what that's going to allow this thing to do is We're gonna be able to pull the string back through so I'm gonna pull it from the other end here And what it'll do is this will help it to fit nicely up in that little cubby And that's how it uh, stays put 
and so it won't come out that size crimping and, and that amount of energy you can tell it's not going to come out of there uh, and it'll pull your top up and down so now what I'm going to do is run the second one so you, I'm not going to walk you through that one and then I'm going to show you drilling out this uh, rivet here alright y'all I have now ran the first two of the four that need replaced on this driver's side as you can see I've got this one here at the very top and it had to run through that big long channel right there which was uh, a pain and one thing I learned was the closer to the very tip of the cord where you can tie that fishing line the smaller it's going to be going through so don't be shy about getting into the very very edge uh, they've already sealed off the tip of those cords they've, they've melted the tips of them so they won't uh, come apart uh, so there's that one and then there's this one here so the top one and the bottom one of these uh, are the blue and the silver and they wrap around the back see the cords are all ran nice now they're hanging here ready to attach. I've taken pictures so I know exactly how the original two uh, were, were riveted on here. And now what I'm going to do is take that eighth inch drill bit and I'm going to drill right in the center of that rivet. Okay. Hang on. Alright again I'm going to try to do this with one, one handed so you see how the drill bit just fits right nicely in that rivet. See if we can pull these old ones off here. All right, see, I gave that a yank and that just came right off. Now, the problem is part of the old rivet is, is still there, but it won't come out. So, what I'm going to do is see, see how it's. I don't know if you can see it there. Again, put down my stuff here again back behind there the, the head just can't come out but it looks like I've drilled it enough it will pop through once I clear the way so what I'm going to do is try to move this forward as it comes forward you should see let's see if I can get some light on this So that rivet comes clear. There it is, it looks like it's clear, so I'm gonna just push it out with that little pick uh, screwdriver that I've got there, a little tiny one. With the, with the pointy end, there it is. Uh, there, it's clear, you can see the head's clear. So let's see what happens when I poke it out. Sorry, you can't see this, I've only got two hands. All right, I was able to just now poke it through you can see that that rivet head is gone. So now I'm going to stand it back up. And now I can prepare my rivet. Uh, pop it in there. And uh, we'll see how that goes. Alright y'all, so I'm ready to attach these uh, two cords. Now I want to make one other disclaimer here. As you're working around this top, you notice the angle I've got this thing at. I've figured out how to keep it balanced so it won't come down. But you should never, ever, ever stick your hands inside these mechanisms without knowing it's stable, knowing exactly how it's going to act, um, and, and never get them in a spot where if it starts to move, you can't pull your hands out real quick. So don't get your down up to your elbow in here. Uh, just don't risk. I mean, you could. It's even in the Zentry uh, work instructions. Uh, you, you really at a lot of risk if you if you get in there in an awkward position. You could lose a limb. Even it's it's pretty ugly. So just be really careful, guys. So you can see here, I've loaded up the, uh, the, the um, rivet with the two cables. I made sure and double checked the pictures to see which one goes on bottom and top and how they're flipped with the opening in or out. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is, is try to stick it through. I'm gonna show you something. So when I stick it in here, yeah, it's great, but it only goes in part way. Why is that? Well, again, I've had to lift the top up so it stands on its own. But that rivet, the new one to go in, needs the same thing the old one came, coming out needed, uh, which is uh, the, the top to be almost all the way down. 
So I'm going to have to hold that with one arm on my left arm. Uh, when this thing pops in, I'll just make sure these, these cords are exactly where the originals were. Uh, and then we'll rivet it in. It's just, just a few squeezes on here and then the uh, head snaps off and you're done. So sorry I can't show that, don't have a cameraman. But that's really it for, uh, for this step. And then I'll do the other two cords and we'll talk about the wrap up and clean. All right, y'all. So now I got uh, the two additional cables uh, repla or replaced and in place. So one, two, three, four. That's the bottom four all needed replaced there. So I've got them done, but now at the very top, you see the old ones are still dangling there. Uh, they've got to get ground off. So I'm going to take this rivet right here. And first I'm going to take my angle grinder right here. And I'm going to get that whittled down to where it's just flat and then try to drill on it. So I can't show it again. I'm doing my own camera work. So uh, I will not show it while I do the grinding, but I'll show you before I start drilling. We'll see how this goes. On the other side, I did. I tried to grind it all the way down. I ended up scuffing up the paint, so I'm going to have to do a little touch-up paint there. Um, and, and, you know, these are painted surfaces. They're not usually getting hit by water, but I definitely recommend. If you end up scraping up something, making scratch marks with your screwdriver or whatever, just put a little touch-up paint on it, seal it. You don't want rust in, in their uh, soft top. So, all right, let's see how this goes. Hey, guys, as I was reviewing this video, it looked like at the end I just failed to go back and show you how it went. So, uh, bottom line is it went really well. Uh, as soon as I finished the parts that I showed you there, the, uh, the top opened and closed just fine. I had to do some cleanup. Uh, there are two pieces here, which I'll show uh, overlay in the video here. Uh, two pieces that it says to put on, like uh, stops, I think is what it calls them in the instructions. And I thought it'd be a pain, but here's a picture of where they are. It turns out the little horseshoe piece just kind of clamps over top of the other piece. There's no screws involved, no bolts, nothing. Just use a screwdriver to pop the little horseshoe uh, clamp off the top and then pull the old one out and put the new one in. Uh, the old one and new one have a slightly different design. So my guess is, you know, they learned something about that design that makes it open and close smoother or, uh, you know, stops some kind of a problem. Doesn't matter. I'm sure the newer ones all have that updated design. So go ahead and just do it while you're in there. Hopefully these pictures will help you find it. Uh, reach in with the long screwdriver, pop the things out. Uh, it, it, it takes about 15 seconds each. That's it. So uh, please go ahead and do that, but uh, hopefully this helps you. Have a good day.